Hi guys, today we're going to make this tiny mitten. It's like for an ornament or a garland, um, and it's really cute, really easy, really fun. So let's get started. Now, I have uh, stopped my yarn right here. I'm going to snip it, and I'm going to bring the yarn in front of this needle number one right here. Now, normally I do it on this side, but you guys can see better if I do it on that side. So, I'll probably end up going an extra row. What do you bet? Since I'm doing it on the other side. Oh, I'm Jamie Mayfield. I want you to know that I appreciate and thank you for joining me today. Okay, now, here's the thing. This pattern is on csmsupplies.com. There's also a blog post with these instructions. This is just to give you a little visual. All right, so we're going to change the project yarn and crank 10 rows. And normally on this machine, I use the heel spring all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and put my heel spring on. I'm kind of crowding myself here with my waist yarn. Okay, now I have to stop. On, at midnight rather than six so I can start hanging the hem. Now, hanging the hem on this 10 rows is the part that's going to take the longest on the whole project. Oh, and I forgot to bury my tail so we don't have to worry about sewing that in. Or not sewing it in. We don't have to weave it in. So I'll bury it on this next row. Now, you'll notice when I'm hanging my hem, I'm not pulling these stitches very hard. I just fold it up and gently pull those stitches over to the needle. If I pull really hard, like reach down there and grab the stitch, huh, that's gonna be a problem. You'll have loops that you missed because when you pull on a stitch really hard, it will make that next stitch disappear. That's how you get those loops. That's for the benefit of you guys just getting started out there because this is a beginner project because it's just a mitten. It's just an ornament. There's no stress involved. I've got so much practice with this. I've got, um, I can do it right-handed and I'm a left-handy, a left-hander. <laughs> All right, so now I have to push down on these stitches because if I pull down, you'll you'll see there's not much put downward pressure on those stitches. So I'm gonna I'll use my finger. Oh yeah, I have to weave my tail in. Thank you, dear husband, for keeping me organized. He's my husband, but he doubles as the video guy. All right, when we're at home. Okay, I'm just going to knit this tail in with the other yarn. Give it a little tug. Okay, finish hanging this hem. Call this project almost done. That's what we'll do. Switch back to the other hand. You know, the other thing you'll notice that I do is I do each stitch sequentially. I don't skip around. That's another way to get loops. But if you keep doing the next stitch, you won't, or you'll have less of a chance of skipping one inadvertently. Okay, now, oh, I'm done. But there's an extra little loop right there from when I uh, knitted the tail in, so I'm just gonna put that right there. It doesn't really matter. So now I'm going to reattach my weight. And I'm going to reset my counter. 
and I'm gonna crank about 55 to 60 rows with this tighter tension. I'm probably gonna need some extra rows. Now, you need to print the pattern that's on the website. And then you need to cut out the mitten shape. So in case you're wondering, this is my normal sock tension for this yarn. It's not as tight as what you thought, isn't it? Okay, I got a little carried away and I did some extra rows. Now we're just going to crank the project off the machine. Then we're going to remove the waste yarn from the project. These scissors are kind of fat. I'm working on this being a party trick. Okay, it worked on that side. Normally when you guys are watching, the party trick doesn't work. You see that time it didn't work. I grabbed the wrong st string, but I can pull it backwards. And voila. Okay, never even took a French class and looky there, babe, I'm bilingual. Huh. Okay, so. The most important step in this project, turn this bad boy inside out. And follow me into the sewing room. Just don't pay attention to my mess. All right, now, the mitten is turned inside out, and I went ahead and cut this out on cardstock. There's the one from the pattern on the website, but I traced it onto cardstock. I'm gonna line the bottom up with the hung hem so we have an edge for our mitten. We tried to hem it on the sewing machine, but that was a disaster. Okay. Now then, All we're going to do is we're going to take and sew around the, the mitten shape. Okay. Now you want to try not to sew your paper into the needle or get your needle under the paper because then it's hard to get the mitten shape off of the project. And that's me going slower. See, because I got my needle on them. Okay. And normally I have two speeds on this sewing machine, stop and wide open. This little thumb kind of gives me fits. And I've got this sti the stitch pretty small so that it catches more of the yarn. Because if you make your mitten at a really loose tension, it's gonna to try to come unraveled and you might wanna sew around it two times. Oh, and I forgot to go backwards and forwards at the beginning to lock the stitch. All right. So, my thread snippers just landed on the ground. It's not where I normally keep them. And I just have two little bitty spots. Okay, three. So there's my shape. Now I'll get my good scissors.
trim around the mitten. And then we'll just turn it inside out. Get the thumb poked out. All right. And there you have the little mitten. Now, you want to see how I make a hanger? I might take and put a little glue right there but I don't think it's a deal breaker at the bottom. You wanna see how I make the little cord for the hanger? Step back into the knitting room. Get my thread snippers. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of bobbin winder you have. This one is also the one that I use on my, um weaving loom so we're going to get a piece of yarn that's two different colors okay that's yay long all right then i have this little bitty clip that i clip to the end of it whoops i don't want that tail in there Let's cut that tail off. Because what I wanted was the two separate colors. And then I'm going to hold on to the end of the loop out here. And all I'm going to do... Well, that didn't go so well, did it? Okay. All I'm going to do is twist this together. Just holding it and twisting. Then I'm going to go in the middle, let it twist on itself, and that's how I made my little cord to hang it with. Isn't that cute? Ta-da!